right, let's see what we got going on tonight, guys. Excellent. Let's see what that says back here. Got it. All right, now, this is going to be a fun little stream. We've got our black canvas. It's covered in Bob Ross liquid clear for Monday Night Madness. Monday Night Madness. We're calling this Season 1, Episode 2 of Monday Night Madness. So, we have our black canvas. Bought it black fresh from the store, just like that. It was black. We put our Bob Ross liquid clear across the entire canvas. That's what it looks like, just like this. Bob Ross liquid clear everywhere. Then we took our crimson and our blue colors, our Prussian blue, which is a very deep dark blue, our thalo blue, and our lizarin crimson, and put them all over the canvas in different areas. You can sort of tell where they are based on what we did. Now, all we're gonna do is basically paint with white paint, and it's gonna be fantastic. So tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Make sure if you wanna buy this painting, it's available for sale. You can get it at paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Head over there. And it's number 877, I believe. So I think it's about 213 is what we're uh, going to have this one be. It's the cost of this one anyway. So take our brush like that, just a whole bunch of white paint. And who knows, maybe we'll just slap it right down through. Boom! Crazy little bit of a roar that we're going to have through this thing. We're going to take our brush, very firmly smash that paint onto there, right? Get a whole bunch of little streaky action bits that are happening right onto the thing. A little streaky action news right there. Now. I'm going to take our two-inch brush, and you're like, oh, God, I hope this turns out better than it looks right now, right? I'm going to take our two-inch brush like that, I'm going to match the angle, and I'm going to push straight up. Just like that. Look at all the color that it interacts with underneath. A lot of pressure. Straight up. Straight up, right? Pull it up. Pull it up. Take that paint and just push it on up. Boom, boom, boom. Watch it literally mix in with all the colors that are underneath it. It's such a cool little technique. Such a cool little thing to do. So very lightly, pull down on the bottom, just like that, top to the bottom, boom, boom, get our gorgeous little auroras right there, just fantastic. And you can even add another one in there, All right? You could add more, you could add less, you could do whatever you want to do. I always say that, guys, it's not about what my painting looks like, it's about what your painting looks like. So let's come in, let's get a little bit more onto our brush, and who knows, down into there. Boom, another one, straight into there, just like that. A little bit extra paint into here, and then we're gonna come back with our brush, dab it off on a paper towel, grab into it, streak it up like that. Boom, 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 boom. Not gonna try to let all the colors touch, otherwise they'll all run together. All right, just like that. They come down and just land on the atmosphere. Shwink, just like that, very cool. Take it all the way from the top, straight down through the bottom. It just drags any little bits off down there. Now we're gonna cover these bottom ones, so don't worry about them too much, right? And say you wanted a little bit extra brightness, in different areas up on your top guy up there you just take a little bit extra brighter paint streak it through there right get our little action very cool get all these little things come down and just happen right there awesome just with a little push a little mush of the brush and a little bit of pressure as we drag up turns into all these very 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 cool colors so remember head over to paintwithjosh.com to find my etsy store link all right it's the very first thing you see on paintwithjosh.com is that Etsy store link. And then once you're inside my Etsy store, search for number 877. And that's this painting. I can't believe we've done 877 paintings. That's a lot of paintings. Now watch, I'm gonna barely just dab my brush into the white. Smallest little bit, just like that. All right, all we're gonna do is sort of light up underneath this area, a little bit of brightness. All right, just lighten up, because we're gonna have to throw our trees over there anyway. And all we wanna do is create a little bit of brightness just from underneath those colors. And then our trees are going to pop right through the top. It's going to be wicked cool. Cover up all that stuff. But you want that little bit of light so our dark trees will stand out as in front of those, right? Now, does anybody know which three colors we use in order to make a shadow around here at Paint with Josh? Especially if we're going to do like a silhouette type of shadow. We'll even use this, these four colors right here because two of them are pretty much the same. But does anybody know those three colors? If you type them into the comments, I might give you a shout out if you have the right ones in the right order. All right, they're always in the same spot on my palette. We always use the exact same ones to make the color with. Does anybody know what they are? Let's see who we got watching back here. Let's see. Crimson, blue, and black says the rain gallery. Pin that comment. Go follow them. Hey, Melanie Lindsay's over here watching on Facebook. Lynette Randall's watching. Lisa Jean Rhodes is here. Mario Ochoa is here. Let's see who we got over on YouTube. We got Francis Johnson Tink T over on YouTube. O Waltz over there, Briar, 
all you guys, wicked. Thank you guys all for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Remember, if you're watching over on YouTube, give me that thumbs up. The more thumbs ups you have, the more people will come watch the video, right? So we're gonna take that dark color, just like that, and get a darker little fan brush. <clears throat> and we're gonna come in and make some little faraway little trees. Just a little thousand little tappy trees. And you could do like 300, you could do 297, however many you wanna do. All right, just get the dark color on the brush, just like that. And then coming back in here, and we'll just start to tap up into our little bits. And then I'm gonna leave a little gap because I wanna have a little taller, more, more defined, more detailed little tree right back in here, all right? So we're gonna leave a little bit, I'm gonna come back and I'll load up more paint onto the brush. Whenever it starts to become less sharp, go back, load up some more paint, right? Dab it in like that. That way we cover some of our auroras. We're gonna take our same brush, a lot of pressure, right? Not trying to drag it all the way up the thing, but enough to help it mush itself in, right? So pressure on the way up. Helps our trees grow a little bit. It helps them get a little bit softer. Come into our trees and just start tapping. Once you tap with that brush like that, just the corner of the brush, all we're using is the corner. You're tapping it like three, four, five, ten times. Look at that little bit of mist that wants to come down, right? All we're doing, tapping it in, tapping it in. Sometimes we'll turn the brush, but we're only really using the top bristles, right? We're not using the whole thing, unless you come in here like this, right? But then your, your fog is all going to be on one straight level. And I remember a very good Bob Ross episode where he, he said that... Uh, if it's all flat like that, it's gonna look like somebody came in and chopped it off with a razor blade. Anybody else remember that episode? I remember that one. So I've always remembered that. Never make it so straight that it looks like a razor blade came in and chopped it off back there. Now let's go make that bigger, a little bit bigger tree. It's got a little bit more detail, a little granddaddy of the forest back here. And he sat back there and we're just gonna add a few little saggy downward details on this guy. Just with the corner of the brush, dropping them out. And then all we're going to do is let him blend in with the rest of the guys back there by going back to our brush, tapping into his base. All right, so you get that little bit of mistiness. All it does is just soften the next little bit of, of paint underneath it so we can add more and add more and add more. Right? We don't want to swipe up on this guy, otherwise we're going to take all those details and mush them too badly. But just like that, tap in. Now, a cool little trick to do is if you have any more white paint left on your brush from when we did our little Aurora's and stuff is, you don't want to have it be too bright. Seems like a lot of paint in there. So you can come in like this, just make our little scribble cloud sort of cursive foggy bits, right? Just a little bit of white paint is all you need to put on the canvas. And as we all know, we always talk about the three P's of paint with Josh, right? What are the three P's? Do you guys know in the comments? Type them in the comments. And as I start to mix this with the amount of paint that's on the, br uh, on the canvas, right? There's nothing on the brush. The amount of pressure, I'm giving you guys all the answers right now. The amount of pressure that we push onto the canvas, right? And what's that last P? Does anybody know that final P of Paint with Josh? Because you sort of need that last P, whether you're doing anything, whether you're gonna go skydiving or, or jumping off the, the high dive of the local pool or you know whatever you do, you need that third P. Does anybody know what it is? What's that third P, guys? Practice, says Matt Jester. It's the first person I saw and I don't recognize his name. So Matt Jester, let's pin you. Gonna give you a follow. And everybody go follow Matt Jester over there on TikTok because he knows, right, with that amount of practice. If you don't have any practice, how can you expect to be good at anything? Take a little bit brighter of our white, go less pressure. Brighter white, less pressure. See that? A little bit brighter section, a little bit of brighter fog, mist, all that stuff back in there, right? Depends on what you want it to look like. I always say that. All up to you, right? Now, the best part about this cool little scene is it's all at night and we have all this undercolor under our canvas. So, Let's clean off the darkness off that brush. And when we come back and hit it with white, oh, it's gonna shine beautifully. Oh yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah. So we got big news to talk about guys on the Monday Madness Show. Big news. I've been telling you guys that we've had some interest and we've been in some talks with some companies and uh, it finally happened. We, uh, we've got an official sponsor that's going to be sending us some products, hopefully. <laughs> we haven't nailed down all the, all the details yet, but we're going to be sending us some stuff, and then we're going to get to talk about them, and you guys are going to get to go check out all of their stuff that they offer, right? It's going to be very cool. First time it's ever happened for Old Paint with Josh, so I'm super excited about it. I know DC's excited about it. I know Bailey's is excited about it, so I hope that you're excited about it as well. Let's see. Take the last little bit of our white. Come in there like that. And and we're going to come in and just make it a little bit brighter like that. 
come over here with our little circles, right? Our bare dry brush, little circles. Just because we added a few little bit of extra trees back in there adds that depth, right? These trees in the back almost look like the negative space in between the auroras, almost. Almost gets you lost back there in all the depth. You got that little bit of cloud back in between the two sections. Really gives it all that depth, right? So let's see if we can get you guys uh, zoomed in over on YouTube just a bit. Just a bit. I don't want to, I don't want to move the camera too much. But just about like that. Otherwise, we're going to have to move the whole thing over. There we go. There we go. Come down a bit so you can see the whole canvas. I'm sorry. I hate having to do this in the middle of the show. But just like so, now you'll be able to at least see a bit closer. See those details we're talking about, right? And everybody else has got a good view as far as Facebook and uh, TikTok is concerned. I'm going to drop Facebook just a bit. Just come down for me just a little. There we go. All right. I'm sorry. Everybody's got the shakes now. There we go. Should have done this before, but of course we were running low on time and you guys know Paint With Josh, I'm never, ever, ever on time. So one more time, let's clean off this little brush and then we'll come back with some white, really light up a little snowy area, throw a little cabin in there. It's gonna be beautiful, beautiful guys. Now you hear that knocking noise, right? Every time, every time I finish the brush and that knocking noise, it's just me dabbing it off on a paper towel, right? Just making sure that I get, look at that. There's all that excess wetness in the brush still, even after dabbing it off on a paper towel. So, don't want to have it be too wet. Now, we've covered our canvas with our crimson and our blue and all the colors underneath. Even though it looks very dark black, there are undercolors under there that are going to shine through. Let's see, we could even, we could probably go with a bit more crimson. Watch this. All right, if you put that dark crimson in there, you just lay it over the top. Maybe we'll do a little bit more, maybe a little bit more over here. Who knows? And then as soon as we go over that area, it'll be a bit pinker than the rest of the area because we laid on some more thick crimson, right? <clears throat> Everything is wet, by the way. I get that question all the time. Like, do you let the uh, do you let the layers dry in between doing each step? No, 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 no. The paintings only take an hour or less, so you don't want anything to be dry. That's a bad thing. When they're all dry, that's no bueno. Now we're gonna come in here with our white, just like that. Whatever it goes across back here is what it's gonna start to pick up, and we can start coming out of our fog and just dropping little bits. Going down like that, like there's a little hill over there. Maybe it wraps itself around, who knows? All depends on what we wanna see, what we wanna have happen, where you wanna have your brightness and your dark areas and this and that, right? All depends on our, our directional pulls too. Watch, you pull off this direction, right? And then come down this direction, you're gonna have a little, little lip right there, a little hill, some sort of something, right? And all we did was take a little of paint onto our brush, put it out there just to start, just to see what our little scene might look like if we had a bit of land underneath, right? You don't have to do everything exactly how you had planned it out before. Start making stuff up as you go. Look at that extra crimson. It's gonna be super pink down in here. Gonna be awesome. Maybe we'll throw our cabin, like maybe right in the middle. That might look kind of cool against all the backdrop of those trees. So here's another th cool thing you can do. You can take your bit of white. Now that we know what we want our, our scene to look like, it's gonna be a bit brighter. <clears throat> I'm gonna pull down in this direction. Start to slide it back. Slide it back, slide it back, slide it over, right? Extending it down. Look at it change into that pink down here. Ooh, wicked. You see that little lip, just like we do in our ocean scenes. You can do that with snow. You can do it with sand. If you wanted to paint a desert scene, you can do the same thing with brown and give yourself that little lip, just like that. Our little mustache shape. If you guys have ever seen me paint a seascape, we always talk about that little mustache shape that comes up. It's like this, right? Little mustache shape. So you can do it with sand. You can do it with snow. You can do it with water. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. Okay, now, <clears throat> if we were going to put a big old cabin way off in the distance back here, all right, just by swiping over our directional swipes, it's going to look cool. Maybe we'll stick a big old tree on top of this hill in between. We could do another one over here. We do lots of stuff. Lots of stuff is coming to my brain already. This could be just a road. It just could be literally like a, and we could put tire tracks throughout the whole thing. All sorts of stuff we can do. Now, let's come in with our white. And come over here, start to drop it so it starts to blend in. And now I'm going to pull it from this other direction. That way it's not so bright coming from that other side. Meeting back up. And all of a sudden we got our little bit of land right out here. Just super simply, right? Make sure these little lines line up. You blend away the little bit of darkness in between. Not everything's exactly the same, right? Very cool. We can work on whatever we want to do. We can go back. We can make it brighter. We can make it darker. We can do all sorts of stuff. So let's get rid of all that color on the brush. All that color, get rid of it. It's going to contaminate the whatever else we want to do. 
Now, who here has ever painted a cabin and had a struggle with it? Have you struggled the last time you painted your cabin or was it like, no, no problem, super easy, cake, piece of cake, right? Was it easy or did you, did you have an issue? Did you struggle with it? Let me know and I'm gonna show you maybe a little secret or two that might help you do one better next time. I'm gonna get that bristle out of here. That's a giant bristle. Get off of that knife there. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see in the comments. Did you struggle last time you painted a cabin? Let's see. Ratman says you could do better. Go ahead, Ratman. Show us what you got, buddy. Show us what you got. You got a million and a half followers? That's cool. Let's see. You had a struggle with it, says Sindel. Thank you. I appreciate it for saying I'm awesome. Joy Beard knows. Never tried to paint a cabin, but you will after I show you how. That's very cool. That's a good comment. So, this little tool right here, it's called a palette knife, right? Shaped to help us. And all we need to do is come back and let's decide we're gonna have our little peak of our roof. We're gonna pull it straight down. Just literally scraping at anything to come off the canvas. Watch this. There's barely any paint there because all it is is some misty bit. We just don't want it to be thick. All right, and then maybe over here, we're gonna scrape to the side. Okay, well, you know what? Yeah, no, we'll do it that way. Yeah, scrape off to the side that way. We're gonna have his roof come out here. I'm gonna scrape down, just pulling any paint that we don't want on the canvas, pull it off to the side, it's gonna be really cool. Okay, now what we're gonna do is come back, we take that dark mix that we made up between our black and our crimson and our blue. We're gonna have to get more crimson out of the box, I think, before we get done. Now, all we're gonna do is take that dark mixture, just like we were gonna make a mountain or, you know, mush it onto the camp, right? All we're gonna do, take that dark mix, come back up, and let's say our little peak was like right here. You just pull it down just as straight as you can get and as hard as you can get, right? You're pushing it against the canvas. You're mushing it on, a lot of pressure, even leaving a little ridge right out here of paint that's because you're pushing on it so hard, right? Now we're gonna come back, we're gonna rotate the knife and match the angle this way, right? See how before it was like this? Because we were working on that straight line. Now we're gonna touch that straight line over here, push it down, come down through, right? Got our little front of our cabin starting to build, but kind of looks like an outhouse right now if you ask me. I think a cabin's got to be a bit bigger than just that one pull down. So we're going to load the whole knife again, come over so it'll be two lengths on this one side. All right, you get two lengths worth of our thing before our peak, and then we'll do about one and a half, if we can get it, off this other side right here. And that way, it'll look like a pretty normal looking little house. All with the measurements, right? One and a half lengths on the left, two full lengths on the right, and it'll look like a house that we're starting to build together. Okay, we're gonna take a little teeny bit, touch it again, just go over the side, but just touching it. So we have like a little, a little eave, a little something, a little hang, a little overhang bit that's hanging off the edge of our roof. Just like that, right? You can come in, you can make yours however big you want. Come back and even shrink it by making your house a bit bigger, right? All depends what you wanna do. Now, come back over here, scrape up a little bit more, right? And on your full knife, sometimes I go into my pile and I only scrape up on half the knife. You guys ever do that? Over here like this, gonna go about halfway up our wall and bring it down about two and a half lengths back, right? We'll go two and a half lengths back that way. Just make it about the same on each one. Bam, 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 bam. Just pulling it down. Doesn't need to be any crazy thing, right? Just like that. Very cool. Now we've got to fill in our roof section. It's starting to look like a little, like a little barn out there, isn't it? The more, the more you do and the bigger you make it, the more you gotta do. So be careful, very cool. Just bring it down, bring that color down. And you want it to really be longer right here in the corner, this little corner right here, you wanna be longer than anything else. So everything else is gonna to have to go from there, right? We're gonna make this little V shape right there. So don't worry about it too much. Take a bit of our black again, all our very dark purpley colored, line up with our roof. And let's start coming down like this, right? Pulling it off to the side. And all of a sudden, you get your very cool little house that's starting to come together. We'll fill in that little hole, don't worry about that. So, just like so, coming down, filling it in, filling it in, filling it in, piecing it in, just like we're making shapes, right? We're just doing some shapes out here. Just making a rhombus, making a little rectangle over here. Hey, bingo, bingo, guys. You got your little cabin right there. Now, all we gotta do is go back and highlight it, and it'd be very cool. And in sticking with the uh, 
palette that we have with our four colors. You could go and use your brown. I could. I probably will, just to show you how cool it looks. Right? But now, all we're going to do is go back and scrape off all the excess darkness off of this roof. You don't want all... Look at that. Look at all that extra paint right there. We could go build a whole other little mini cabin with that amount of paint. Right? Scrape it off. Look at the excess. Don't want to have it all up there, otherwise it's going to overmix with our other colors. Now, we're going to come in, we're going to grab up our brown. A little bit of brown over here, a little bit of white. Start to mix that guy up. It really starts to look like wood if you don't overdo it. So, oh, right there. Look at that. Excellent, right? But I always like to dull it down a bit. We'll take a bit of our purpley bits, mix them in there. Just a touch. There we go. Depends on what you want yours to look like. Starts to look older and older and older wood. Now, you don't want it to be too super bright either because we're in a, and it's a nighttime scene, right? So let's add a little bit of our Van Dyke brown, just that darker browner color, and mix it up. Very cool. Scrape up a little bit of that, come back up into here, turn our knife underneath, and just pull it down. Look at those cool little wood streaks it makes, right? Just same pressure all the way down, not trying to make it break, trying to mush it on so it pushes. Look at that. Ah, oh, just like that. Wicked cool. All right, come over to this side, pull it down. Scrape up a bit, pull it down, right? Those very cool little things. Now, we've got to make one side of the cabin a bit darker than the other. So this is what our color is going to look like for our, our front cabin, right? the front of our cabin right there. We've got our little bit brighter color. We've got to make it a bit darker now for the side. So let's get a bit more of that purpley dark mix, mixing it up into that browner color, all right? And that's going to get really deep. That's how you make Van Dyke brown right there. Come over there. All right. Boom. Get our darker side of our brown, brighter side of our brown. Even though it's at night, you're still going to notice a difference in the color somewhere. Somewhere, somehow. Now let's go back and brighten it up with some snow. Get a bit of snow onto our brush or onto our knife like that. Come up here. Drag it down. You want to let this one break though. Oh yeah. That's that's cool. And you come down like that. Let it break. Oh, look at those little things, guys. Remember, we've got a class that we're teaching at Meadows Mall on uh, the 12th of August. So if you want to come take a class and learn how to paint in person, we'll do it like, we'll do it like, uh, uh, oh, what was his name? Oh, I'm failing right now. Oh, never mind. We'll just let it go. <laughs> we'll just let it go. Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze. We'll do it like Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore, right? I'll be behind you. We'll be sitting down. You'll all have your hand in the knife and I'll teach you how to paint. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Come out here, make it a little thicker. So you get down over the edge, pull it off, a bit off of the edge right there. Get that little saggy, saggy old roof, right? You come in here and you can very easily clean it up. Boom, just like that. Mixing it in with the paint that's underneath. Come back here, get a bit more of our thick white and plop it up there again. Adding more depth, more bits. This is how we're doing it on the mountains, right? Kind of plop it up there so it's just really thick. And it's going to glob in different areas, just like it would. It would sit out there and catch snow in different areas across the whole roof. Now, you got to take a little teeny tiny bit, go right above that bit of darkness, just above it. Put our little bit of white off the other side of the roof. All of a sudden, you got a little 3D building, just like that. Now. Maybe our little 3D building had an old window way back there, right? You just scrape through all that paint and remove it. Maybe he had a door that we'll use our small knife for. Hello! Did you guys see that? That was amazing. I tossed it and caught it on screen, hopefully. Now we're gonna take our small knife. Yeah, should we have his door on the right or the I should probably have it on the left. Take that and watch this. We're gonna scrape it in real hard, bending the knife, pulling all the paint away from the canvas, right? Getting it all there so we could stack it back and make a whole nother mountain out of it later. Just like that. Maybe you had a little window. Boop, just a little scraper. All you got to do, go back, you can adjust it, and you can make it however you want, right? Just like that. Very cool little building this guy's got. Very neat little house. Now, in order to make his house look like it's not just floating there, like a ghost house, right? We're going to come back over here and we're going to start to slide it out. Slide it out. Starting it up top, bringing it down to that corner. Remember what I told you earlier? We're gonna make this downward shape and it's gonna be like a little V, just how we paint the birds in the sky. We'll go like that, make our little V, little V right there. All you gotta do, helps make your building look more 3D. So we come down like this, 
Now what we're going to do off to this side, we're going to start higher up here. We're going to start pulling off. We're going to work our way down and down and down to that same little point. All of a sudden, you got a cool little 3D house right there, guys. Very simply, very easily done. As long as you got the know-how, right? When you know what you're doing, then it's easy. I'm going to come in here with a little bit of light just on the edge of our open doorways. Just like that. Gorgeous. Come across it with our small piece right on the top. Boop. You don't even have to connect the whole thing. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Right? With this guy, maybe he had a little overhang. What if we went over each side of the door? Just a little bit. There we go. That's cool right there. That's cool right there if I do say so myself. Pull that guy down just very slightly, right? Look at how far I went down. Watch this. You're like, oh no, what did I do? I went all the way down there. Doesn't matter. We'll blend it all out. It's all good. Now, let's come over here. We're going to grab up some white. It almost looks like this is all water out here. It's just floating on the edge of a little pond, which would be kind of cool if you ask me. Now, let's say if we got some white out here, this is the lighter side of our cabin. So, why don't we make it a bit brighter as it's coming up to this side, right? Just like that. Start dropping in a bit of white. Instantly wants to go and change. So you need a bit more. There we go. Pulling it off in whatever direction you feel like. Totally up to you. I like to make, at least where I know there's like a little roadway or something, I think maybe like a little dip, like a little smiley face, some sort of something. Right now with this darker color, as it, and not that we added any more darkness, we're just using less white and it's gonna blend in the more time that we streak it, right? A little bit less and a little bit less until it's darker than our brighter side. And you can go back and add little differences and little things. Just how we do it with our little waves, right? Take a bit more of our bright white, come back over like this. It all depends what you want to do with your little scene. And all of a sudden, now we got a very cool little spot for this little cabin out here. It's freaking neat. I like that. See, same way that we pull it off, though. If you come up this way, you're going to go down that way. Come up this way, down that way. That same little mustache shape that we do when we're painting our little seascapes and stuff, right? Always changing the direction, sliding it over. Changing the color just very little slightly. You get all these little ridges, little dips. Dip, dive, and dodge. Right back through there. Right? Very cool. A little bit of brightness right there. Neat. Now, as we do that, we can go back in. Because I would imagine there would probably be a little bit of snow just out there on the edge. And maybe a touch right through there. Very cool. Very cool, you guys. Go back and delete those little bits. Whoop. Just erase them. <laughs> Very neat. Gotta have a little snow on this old cabin, man. It's gotta be freezing cold in there, too. Freezing cold in there, if you ask me. I mean, nobody asked me, but if you were to ask me, it would be cold. It would be cold. So, just like so, take that guy and watch this. Come up underneath, and the more you mix it, Right? It'll just disappear. All that white just blend in with our bit of our wood. Very cool. All right, now let's take, since we don't have any trees in this old guy, why don't we take a little tree while we still got the room, and let's put a little sticky guy way back there. The more we go down, the more we push. Obviously, he's not going to be right outside of his front door like that. But you could do whatever you wanted to do. Maybe you had another little friend off there. Very cool. All right now watch this. Watch this little trick. The further that we start swiping it back, the further these trees will go back away from the cabin, right? Watch this. We start pulling it. We start pulling it. Oh, no. Now that guy's further behind this guy. All right. Now let's try to catch him up. He's catching up, and we're going through, and now we're about 10 feet away from the cabin, and we're going back, and we're going back, and this guy's getting further and further and further and further and further away. Look at that. Trying to catch up with this guy. He's coming back to the side, and we're going to go over here, and then we're going to swipe it over there, and over there, and over here, and then both, boom. Look at how further they are away from the cabin just by lifting up the bottom, right? Not doing anything with the top, just by raising the bottom up, helps push them off out into the distance. Now, let's get a little bit of our white onto the brush and put a little, just a couple little bits out there. Little streaky bits, boom, all you need. A little bit of detail, way back there. Now, let's put one more. Now, you know what we're gonna do with those guys? Let's make them our little, let's make them some, you know, we could do them downward, fat, uh, downward saggy trees too. Just like Bob used to do, I'm in a Bob mood. Bop, 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 bop. Turn the brush. Bing, bang, bing, bang, bing, bang, boop. Just like that. Pop in all that darkness, right? It's all you need. A little dark shadowing back in there, and then you go back and you highlight it the teensiest, tiniest little bit. 
So we're gonna come back and get a little bit more black and blue and crimson onto our brush. And then I need to get some more crimson out of the box. And come back up into here. This guy's a little upward, a little slappy tree. A little tappy slappy tree. See what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to slap up into it, creating our upward facing branches versus the downward facing branches. Just like that. Boom, get your little darkness way back there. Almost looks like those guys are on the same level now, way out there, huh? Ah, way out there, huh? Just like that. A bit of our snowy mix. Got like a little ridge right out here. The more you pull it, the more you're gonna change it and move everything, right? The more higher you go back here, watch this. Our snow to look like it's really, or our scene to look like it's going off into the distance. Swipe it up into the trees, it makes it look more realistic. Very cool, soft little bit. I like that. I like it. Now, what would be neat is if we could brighten up the area below it, right, right in there, just so you have that extra brightness, kind of create our little bit. The brighter, the more paint that we go, the brighter and brighter and brighter it gets, guys. Just like that. Just like that. Now, I want to get a little bit. We'll put it right up to the door. Just super thick, though, on the brush. Very cool. Boom, boom, boom. It's brighter and brighter and brighter. All right, now we've got a little bit of brightness so we can bounce some more dark color off, but we need to get some crimson out of the old paint box because whatever reason, I like to start shows with not enough paint on my palette. I don't know why, don't ask why. I don't have an answer, but that's just how it goes. So anytime we take a little break or an intermission like this, you guys tell me where you're watching from, what's your favorite sandwich? Because I love to know the sandwich question and where everybody is in, throughout the world that's checking me out, right? I gotta know, I gotta know where you guys are at. We've got a lot of fans on the East Coast. We've got a lot of fans in the Midwest. We've got a lot of fans in uh, the Philippines and the UK, uh, over in uh, Australia. Got tons and tons of fans. Just had my first, uh, my first poster go to Australia. So, wicked, thank you for that if you're here watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, what if we did Ooh, guys, there could be like a little fence back here. Might have to make the, no, that actually might be perfect. If we throw a little fence back in there like that, that'd be cool. Let's take this guy over here though. We're gonna come down, get thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker and boom, and plop him down right in the front, right there. Perfection. Now we need to get a little liner brush and a little of our odorless mineral spirits in order to help that paint become thin enough to come off of our brush easily, right? See how it's all runny? It's crazy runny right here because we need it runny like that in order for it to come off the brush, right? See like that and it comes across that other paint. If it's not runny enough, it's not gonna come out and make your crazy little branches very easily. You're gonna really be stuck hard uh, working at it. So, little bits, right? You don't wanna come too far across your, your little cabin. That would really hurt its feelings if you worked on that cabin so much and then you decided to just go right across it with all your branches come off this side. Very cool. Over here, little bits, little fling, little flick over there. Cool little tree branches. Don't have to do too many of them, that's for sure. That's for sure. Now, we need something down here in the foreground. It's gonna be a little bit bigger. We could either do some branches that like hang out over the top, like they're coming down. We could do lots of stuff. We could put a little Christmas tree down in here. We could do some highlights. We could do all sorts of stuff, guys. So, let's see. It looks like I forgot to uh, hit my start clock when we went live, so that's good. Let's see here. I'm going to get a little bit more of our liquid white into my old little Petri dish, is what I like to call it, because there's got to be something growing in here by now, I would imagine. Just gross. Okay, let's see. Now, we're going to get our little liner, or our fan brush. Get our fan brush. Dip it into our liquid white paint, which is right over here in my little Petri dish, right? It's a very runny, very wet paint, so it'll come off. Look, see it's dripping off of the palette right there? Boop! It drips off and gets all on it. So, we go into our white, just like that. And let's go into a little bit of our blue, just a teeny touch of blue and bring it down here. just want to have a little bit of bluey color to this, sort of similar to our white, not too different, right? And let's put the blue off the back side of this guy like this. Just with little teeny tiny taps. And as we tap, you're only really covering about a quarter of the tree because you want to leave about a quarter of it in the darkness, right? This guy was a little downward facer, so we're going to turn the brush a bit. See how they pop out like that? 
We're only covering little bits of the tree though because you gotta leave half of it covered. Uh, sorry, half of it uncovered, a quarter of it covered in light, and a quarter of it covered in shadow. So you got light, shadow, and then deep dark shadow. Let's go back into here with our white onto the brush. Just getting it down like that. Go back in and need a little bit, a little bit more liquid white like that. There we go. And it come off the brush a little easier. All right, but you don't want to be just pure liquid white. That's not going to help anybody. Come over like that and come over here and just start to tap. And as long as we're tapping, we're going to start pushing and we're going to try to leave a few dark areas in there. All right, look at all these dark areas. do not have to be so big, but I want to leave them in there. They help. They help kind of where all of our little critters are going to live, right? That's where all the little critters live, is back there in those deep, dark spots. Just like that. Don't have everything covered the same. Now, come on to this guy. Tap on his little trunk, and then we're going to go off to the side. Little bits. Not everything's going to be covered, of course. You fall down, and you got two little trees, two little old friends out there, just chilling, watching the day go by. Now, let's take a little bit of our white onto the black part of this branch, and we're going to touch it to the side right here. Just the left side. Touch it. And go up as many times you can until it disappears, right? And then every so often, if you put enough on there, just go back and touch it a bit more. And all we're doing is creating a little tree bark, just a little birch bark right there, right? Just by taking a little bit and sort of mushing it on, not trying to cover up all the darkness. No, 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 no. Never want to cover up all the dark, right? Even especially at the top. There we go. And our little bit helps that thing stand right out. Very cool. Now I'm gonna come off of this branch up here. A few little bits, nothing too crazy, All right? Just kind of draw it on there with the knife. Just have that little bit of darkness, a little bit of white. You don't want to have it all white. And you don't want to have it all dark either. I mean, you gotta have a little bit, a little bit of light somewhere. It's gonna come down and touch. It's not a, not a pure black scene at night. It's not a pure black night, a clear white moon. Paint with on the canvas trying to consume some paints for the eve so I can, <laughs> I can keep going. Bro, sitting in my studio painting all alone. Just hit the east side of the LPC. <laughs> uh, on a miss and trying to find Mr. Paint with G. No? Nobody? That's fine. That's fine. This one looks really cool. I really kind of want to put a fence out here though. If we put a little fence out here. Yes, guys. Can you feel it? Can you feel the fence? Because I can feel the fence. I can feel the fence because you guys are gone. <laughs> uh, while, all the, while all the viewers leave. No singing, Josh, please. Thank you. I'll just take this guy up right here at the bottom. Just pull him any which way. Pushing a little harder with our brush. Dumping a little bit more of that color off. Right? Get those little things. We still have our little slope coming down. Coming down this way. This guy coming off this way. Remember, all this oil paint is still wet. You can slide it and mess around and do all sorts of stuff. All up to you. Now, let's go in with the big knife. I'm gonna grab that bit of our dark color because you gotta have that dark undershadowing first. And maybe you had a little fence right out here. Just a little bit. Don't have to be too big. This guy's gonna be a bit taller as we come down. And we're gonna go back and load up a bit more onto the knife. Come back into here. I right, always want to go down a bit lower than you think you need to. Actually, let's put a guy up over there. Very cool. Take that guy off to the side. Now, I'm really going to show you something neat. Just something neat. Okay, taking our little side bits. Go like this. Adding a little piece there, a little piece there. So we want them to connect. There we go. Just like that. And then I guess we're gonna go across and highlight them, of course, with our bit of our um, our brown paint like we have on our house. So, no worries. Very small, doesn't have to be too big. Right. A bit off there. Maybe this guy's got a little piece sort of fell down towards the house like that. And then this other piece maybe went off and attached behind the place. Very cool. That's a neat one. All right, all we're doing, add a little bit of longer legs to him, right? Just like that. Very neat. And then we're gonna take our brush and we get to decide how far away that little fence lives just by pulling it back. Sliding those little legs back, right? 
how far away does our little fence post live? If we pull him back and we push him back into the snow, and we get all these little shadowy bits, and then we can always go back and highlight him again. Right? Push it way back into the snow back there. You get this awesome little fence. I like that. It's on like this little hill. Come down, racing around this guy's place. Now we're going to come back with that same knife, and we're going to go back, take a little of our liquid white, mix it in with this brown over here. Just a touch. I want to have a little bit of the brown kind of showing on some of the beams, and then white on the other beams, of course. So I got a little brown area, it doesn't get covered, not everywhere, just a little bit. A couple little places of brown that don't get fully covered up by the snow. Now we're gonna come back in here with our liquid white and our titanium white. I'm gonna start touching the top, just like that. Sticks that snow right to the top of our pole. Come back on this guy, a little touch down there. Right over here. Whatever doesn't get covered by the white, you got your brown showing underneath which is very neat. Come on to there. Okay. Off to the edge. Very cool. Off to the races. Off to the races, guys. Take our brown, come in, and just touching on the left side of our little posts. Just the left side. Just like that. And that way, all of our lights coming in from there. Everything's looking gorgeous. Looking gorgeous. All right, let's say we do some little, uh, some little tree, or uh, some tire tracks. I love how those tire tracks came out in the last one. So let's do some tracks, yo. Wicked cool. Wicked cool. All the snow all built up all crazily. A little bit more white onto our brush. Come back. You can make it a bit brighter in different places. It's totally up to you what you want yours to look like. I always say that. Don't I always say that? I always say that. Now, can come back over here. Very neat. Wrapping it around. See how we're going on that downward angle like that? It's helping it look a bit more rounded. Just like we do with the water sometimes, guys. Brush hair out of there. What you doing in there? There we go. Swiping it back up. Maybe we can get some to drag in through the door. Close the door, they said. It's cold out there. It's cold out there every day. All right, wicked. Now, got our little fence. That's fantastic. Put another big tree right here in the front. That'd be kind of cool, guys. Kind of cool. There's going to be a lot of overlap onto that guy, though, if we try to do that. Let's go for a little guy, then. We'll just do a little baby tree. A little baby tree in the front. So our, our three favorite colors are blue, crimson, and black, like we always do, or black, crimson, and blue, whichever one you want to say. All right, we're going to come over here and touch about halfway up these trees, taller than our house. Actually, if we stay off to the side enough, we might be able to do it. <laughs> Bravery test, gonna come down like that. Straight down, right? Ripping through all of that color. Just a ripping and a tearing through all of that color. Now, let's come over and we're gonna start making our little guy. And these guys that are in the front, you can push a little bit more, you can have them be a bit bigger, right? We wanna keep this little separation in between the two trees. We don't wanna have them overlap each other so badly that you can't tell what's what. That's no good. All right, a bit of our Prussian blue in there as well, make it really deep and dark. And then we can come down here and start popping in the little bits. But instantly it wants to blend in with all that white paint that's on the canvas. You see how it's starting to get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter? So watch, let me show you a trick. Let me show you a trick with that, right? If you let this get too bright white, or too bright gray even, it's not gonna show those deep dark colors that we want to show. So. In the area that where we know we're going to go across with our tree, go scrub that bit of white off, right? Not only is it going to allow your tree to stick more easily to the, the canvas, that's our number one rule, it's going to allow all that darkness not to mix in with all that white. Now watch, let me show you what I'm talking about. We come back in here with that dark color, and it's not going to start to go gray like it was before. All right, get our dark mix going on our brush. Our two blue colors, the black, the crimson, the blue, everything, just everything. Get it all nastily in black, right? Just like that. Ooh, thick, chunky, nasty, right? We're gonna come in here, and we're gonna start to tap. Now look, instantly it's gonna wanna stick better to the canvas because there's not so much snow, there's not so much paint. You see how dark it's staying without changing, without going over all that white and, and letting it mix in. We're keeping it very dark because we've taken away all that white. We don't want it there. It's interacting with our with our dark color too much. So you gotta get rid of it. Scrub it off, right? 
Come back in, get a little bit bigger with our branches as we're pushing in there, popping them out. And then we're gonna go back and highlight this guy and he's gonna look very cool. Just like that. Don't need to do much guys, I'm telling you, you really don't. You don't gotta do much. You just gotta know where to place some stuff. A couple little tricks to show you how to keep everything nice and dark and paint with Josh for life. That's what I'm talking about. So let's come in here. We're gonna get our highlight color going again with our, our liquid white and our titanium white and our phthalo blue. You gotta have both. Man, there's a lot of dark color in that brush. Sometimes you get loaded up, loaded up. All right, get that going. A bit of our liquid white Come into our blue section up here. All right, and really, there we go, making a bit darker blue than it was before. Yeah, see the two differences in the blue color there? You want it nice and wet and blue. So we're gonna come off the back side with our blue touches, just coming up very lightly, kind of flicking at the canvas, just literally. Just little taps, kind of going up with our brush, trying to stay out of your guys' way so we can sort of see what we're doing as well as see the brush and everything else and make a painting that's worth selling, you know what I mean? I think this one's like 213. If you wanted to go get this one, uh, it's 213 over in my store, comes with free worldwide shipping. So you don't gotta worry about the shipping costs. Free anywhere in the worldwide shipping. Plus we also do uh, posters. I've got a poster very similar to this with some tire tracks in the snow and different things. Uh, maybe we should, uh, we could probably still work some tire tracks in the snow, watch this. We add our black to our white, make it a little bit more gray. Check this out, right? We come out like that. It looks a little bit white on the camera, but trust out here. All right, and we're gonna make them a little bit wider as they go, just like that. We have these little tire tracks as you go. And you can always go back and make them a bit darker as you go, but don't do them too dark right off the bat. You're not gonna like it. It's right off the bat and it's too dark. Now, cool thing about these is you go back and you soften them, soften them a bit. Soften them, no, no, no. Cool thing about these is you forget how to talk. <laughs> Just like that. Soften them down, dragging them through, right? Creating these little trenches in the snow. They're getting further, closer together as they go further away and wider as they go closer to us. Very cool. Bring down our little bits of our our um, bank, our little snow bank from our hill right there, covering over some of those bits. They don't all have to be exactly the same, right? Who knows, this guy might've been here, he might've just been here, might not have. Might've been a long time since he was here last. Now that we've done the one, let's go back, because I can never go through the same tire track twice. So if I'm out there driving around, we're gonna have multiple tire tracks out there because I can never go through the same one. So bring that guy in up there, dragging it around, a little bit wider, right? All these little dips and dodges, little dips and differences like that, doesn't matter. That's what you want it to look like. You want those differences in color, especially down here in the, in the, the quote unquote ground in our snow out here. All right, just like that, swiping it over, pushing a little bit harder, dragging them down, but not trying to mix them so much that it looks like we need, or that we have two things in there, right? Uh, sorry, not mixing it so much that we look like we have the same color, and we need to have two different tracks in there is what we need. Very cool. Very cool, guys. Now, let's go ahead in our last little bit of our highlight. Taking that, getting it off of our brush. Gotta go back with our white, our liquid white, and our titanium white. And we're not gonna touch it as much, right? We're not gonna try to cover every single bit. So we don't need to do that. We don't need to cover every single piece of all the darkness that's left. We gotta save a lot of it, right? We're gonna come in, we're gonna tap, and then we're just gonna start to tap up little guys, little touches, up and down, all right? We're not even getting the whole bit of tree on this guy. Look, I'm out here tapping where I would normally be tapping on my branches, but we're not touching the gambit, right? Coming back, coming back, all about the angle of the brush, right? And every so often you bring some of your little light areas back over into your shadowy areas. They kind of go away like that. Very cool. Very cool. Very neat. All right. Remember, guys, start coming up with a name for this painting because we are about done and we're about ready to name it. So if you think you got the best name, come up with a name, put it in the comments, and we'll see who's got the best. 
as uh, we all decide what this painting is going to be named. So slide out. Watch this. You know what? We're going to go across our, our bit because this one's got a big old shadow. Watch this. Right? If all of our lights coming from this side, you would imagine there'd be a shadow back behind our tree. So we're pulling a little bit of the darkness from the actual tree out there, just like that. Now we've got to come over and make our, our little tire tracks just a bit darker in here to stand out from those guys, right? Because we've made our shadowing darker, so we got to make these guys a bit darker. A couple little things. Make them soft. Very soft. We can even pull them up from the bottom. It don't matter. It don't matter. Just try to match them up with those lines is all. There we go. Look at that. A little shadow back behind the tree. Got our little bits of our tire tracks and everything else. Wicked. Wicked. Let's take a little bit of bright white and maybe we can get, there we go, just a touch. Right out there, right out there, you guys. Mix it in with our little bit over here, our guy off to the side. With those differences in our directional poles, in our little mustache action, All right? A little ridge, a little snow ridge right there, a little some sort of something. Drag this guy down just a bit more, just to brighten it up, just the smallest bit. It's almost got too dark on me now for whatever reason, I don't like it. There we go. Yes. Yes. Wicked. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like it, guys. All depends on the angle of our directional swipes, right? Our little tire tracks, where they're going, how far they're going out there. And then how far we blend them down once they're out there, right? How far are you going to mix them? How far do you want it to get back to that original snow color, right? All depends on you guys. Make it cool. Always pulling the brush down in that same angle, though, just very lightly. And then we're going to come back over this guy. Push a little bit harder on him. Not, not so much that he blends away all the way. Just enough. There we go. Oh, that's cool. That's a cool painting right there, guys. Now, let's see. Let's see. That's freaking neat. I love it. Start coming up with a name for this one. Let me know what you want to call it in the comments below. And we'll start throwing on the signature for this guy. Taking our liquid white and our titanium white. Going to make a little light color. And throw our bird family off in the sky. Flying through the scene way back here, even. Then we can even toss in some stars and stuff, too. It'd be really cool. A little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. Gorgeous. So yeah, big news, guys. I appreciate you guys being here because we got the email back from the company and they are excited to partner with Josh. It's going to be fantastic. And I'm really going to need your guys' help when we finally do that video and put it out. That's when I need you guys to go support that company because the more that you guys support me supporting them or by supporting them, the more cool videos we get to do. So it's going to be really neat. Gotta be neat. All right, now come up with a name for this one, guys. Tell me what you want to call it in. It's an awesome show. Just about five minutes left. It's gonna be sweet. Sweet. So tell me what you want to call this one. I gotta get a quick drink. Ooh, Snow Rora. I like that. That's a cool one, Snow Rora. I dig it. I love the little tire tracks in this one. Just gouges. Just gouges tracks. We came ripping through here with a four-wheeler or something. Really cool. Now, let's throw those little bits of our stars in just so I don't forget. Just a few little things. And we come out here on the edge, just a couple. You don't want to put too many out there. It gets very bright, very fast, full of stars. So don't do that. Just a couple little flicks. Remember, tell me what, you, uh, what name you want to have for this painting. And we got to end one of the streams because I can never tell if the painting sold because I've got all three of my cameras going right now. All of my devices are rocking and rolling, which means I can't check the store and see if there's a buyer or whatever. All right, so let's see. Check this out, guys. Boom! Come paint with Josh live at Meadows Mall inside City of the, Ar uh, City of the World Art Gallery. DC, my manager, gave me this uh, thing today. It's freaking fantastic, and I love it. We're going to go put it there uh, at the gallery. Maybe we'll put, like, the time on it or something, like, with the date and time that we're going to do the, the workshop. It's going to be sweet. It's going to be awesome. Just going to be fantastic. 
So, remember guys, come up with a name for this one. All we gotta do left is uh, sign it on the bottom, finish cleaning off these brushes. Did I clean this brush? I don't think I did, I don't know. We'll clean it anyway. So, I'm glad that you guys were here to watch, to hear the news. I can't tell you who the, the company is yet, right? I can't talk about all the, all the, uh, what, what do they call it? All the, well, I mean all the details, but all the, uh, the deliverables and the, you know, all the stuff, all the action that goes along with it. So we can't talk about all that, but I can tell you that they accepted, we accepted, they accepted, and we're going to be doing a really cool thing soon. So congratulations, me. Thank you, everybody. Love you guys. Thanks for the congratulatory, you know, whatever remarks and clap hands and all the other stuff you guys do. So, let's get this, we're gonna scrape off the palette, and then we're gonna get it all cleaned up so we can go back and look at the names and see what we're gonna name this painting. Let's see, a lot of times if you get to name the painting, we pin your comment, and when your comment gets pinned, everybody goes over and follows you because when it's your turn and your comment gets pinned, you're gonna want everybody to go follow you, right? Tit for tap, two-way street. So, let's see what we got for for mints. Let's see. Pop, 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 pop. Winter Dreams, Snow Drift, Grandpa's Cabin. I like that one. Thank you, uh, Sheila Ann. Thank you. Thank you, Shweta and Teresa. Cindy says, My Peaceful Place. I like that. That's cool. Thank you guys, everybody over on YouTube. Make sure you give me a thumbs up if you like the painting over there. And uh, the more thumbs up we have, the more viewers will get. So, Red Horizons, I like that too. Crimson Cabin, Snow White, Snowdrift Serenity, Winter Crossroads, My Dream House. I like that. It's my dream house too, I think. It's definitely my dream house. So, all right, we're going to have to end one of the streams. So let's name, well, let's just, uh, shoot, I don't think anybody's bought it. I don't think anyway. So, Hunter's Hideaway, I like that. Crimson Cabin, I dig that one too. Frigid Shanti of Crimson's Aurora. That's a title. That's a title and a half, guys. Northern Heights. Ooh, like Northern Lights, but like high up. I got it. Northern Heights. Safe Haven from uh, Kathleen over there on Facebook. Amanda Krause over there on Facebook. Very cool. Please share the process of cleaning the brushes. All right, I'll get a brush dirty and I'll show you how. I've got lots of shorts over on uh, uh, YouTube and stuff. And my TikTok is full of brushes. The show sold on Etsy? No way. All right, now we gotta end one of the streams. So, let me clean a brush for you real quick, okay? Let's just say we came into here and we just we touched a little bit onto our thing and now, shoot, we got paint on the brush that we gotta get off. So, what I like to do, you don't need to have a glass jar, okay? Mine's only glass because it used to be see-through enough for you guys to see the color change and it's really cool. I've got those videos coming up as my reels and TikToks and all my YouTubes get caught up. So. Uh, we're going to take it, we dip it very lightly, just the tip, the quarter inch of the bristles, the smallest little bit. And then once you pull it out of your uh, solution, mine's about right here, right? So even though it looks like we've dunked the whole brush in, we've really only dunked in the tip of the bristles. And you can tell there's a lot of paint thinner still left in there. So after you spin it into your little cup, and it all kind of goes around the edge and then falls back into our cup, we're going to shake it into a, uh, into a trash can. Big old trash can, shake it three, four, five times, hard as you can, shake it off. That way you got nothing else that can come off of the brush and come back at the cameras, right? So then we go into our beater bucket. Now, I beat the devil out of it into a five gallon bucket and it's got a golf ball basket down in the bottom of this bucket. Now the golf ball basket is there because that's the only thing that I had when I very first started painting. And initially I was like, okay, I spent, I don't know, $250 on the brushes and the paints and the canvas and the easel and everything all to get ready to paint. And then I was like, what do you mean? I gotta buy another brush cleaning thing? Ugh, I'll go out in the garage and I'll find something. So I went out in my garage, I found that golf ball basket and I told myself, okay, Josh, if this painting thing works out in my wildest dreams and I end up being, you know, whatever, I get good, then I'll buy the brush cleaning kit, the proper one. Four years later, over 1 million followers and I still have that same gross, nasty little golf ball basket down in there and it does the job it does the job i'm telling you so everybody 
I love you. Let's uh, let's see. I gotta end one of these streams, and that way we can find out if the painting is sold or if Etsy just pulled it out and they just want to ruin my whole business. So uh, we'll probably say goodbye to YouTube. Uh, I love you guys over on YouTube. Thank you all for sticking around and watching, learning how the painting came together. Now you're gonna be able to go rewatch the stream over and over and over and over again to learn how to do it yourself. And it's gonna be fantastic. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you for tuning in. I love you. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Get them out of here, YouTube. All right. All right, guys. Let's see what we got as far as names. I still want to get. Uh, I still want to get some names. I still want the suggestions. Still want the name suggestions, guys. So, ooh, burning sky. I like that. That's a cool title. That's a cool title. Definitely gonna sign my initials at the bottom. We got that. Don't worry about that. All right, let's see in the store what we're looking at as far as if it's gone or not. It shows we have an order, and boom, this one is gone. That's cool. Uh, another repeat buyer, a guy named Tim, actually. Very awesome little brand new customer. Tim, I appreciate you. Uh, let me know what you want to call this one, Tim. What do you want to call it? And he might not even be watching, so let's send him a message just real quickly. So apparently you guys can't buy this one. It's already sold. You can't have it anymore because it's Tim's. And I don't think he's gonna let you have it. We need a name for 877. Dang, all right, let's send him a name. Uh, send him a message, see if he'll write back to me and see if we can get a name for this one. So in the meantime, why don't we spin it around? I'll show you guys how we sign the back of the paintings, all right? We're still waiting on a name from the buyer, but the best part, I think, about a Paint With Josh painting is that if you buy it, you get to name it, right? Like, I let you name the artwork whatever you want. If you're the buyer, the world is your oyster, right? There we go. I can never spell original. Don't laugh at me. It's fine. Number 877. So this one was painted on 724 of 2023. And in the meantime, since we don't have a title, we're all going to go over to paintwithjosh.com, right? And from paintwithjosh.com, you can get to my Etsy store. You can get to my, uh, my YouTube and my Facebook and my Instagram, my Amazon affiliate shop, where I have all this stuff that I use that you guys can get. Uh, my Amazon wish list, where you can go send me a gift to use, a new brush or a new tube of paint or a whole new set of paints. Or some new, some more black gesso, something that I can use uh, to, in order to create these things. As we all know, art supplies are not free. We all know that. And I got to pay for the, the lights and the, the uh, internet bill to stay on so we can keep doing all these streams, right? Got to have a place to live. So art pays for all that stuff. And you guys, by supporting my store, help me literally live. And I love you so much for it. Uh, but I want to say goodbye to Facebook. And uh, until we see you guys again next time on Facebook, take care. I can't wait to see your guys' version of this. I really can't. Go rewatch it a million times. Just a million times. All right, TikTok. This has been a fun one for sure. Fun one for sure. Get the camera flipped around here. And just give me one second because it's all like tangled up amongst all the other cameras and the tripods and everything else. There we go. Wicked. Excellent. Awesome little painting. It's very much like uh, red, white, and bluish. I very much love it. Let's see, I don't very, I mean, I'll use acrylic black gesso, but I don't like to paint with acrylics. I find them much harder to do. Winter Paradise, says Tim. Did he message me back? Tim, where are you at? I gotta see it for myself. Or one of my girls has to confirm for me. One of my sister wives. Winter Paradise, it'd be awesome. It's a cool title. I love those little tire tracks in there. Shoo. Just gonna be like, yeah, we varnish them sometimes uh, with the Gambar, uh, sorry, Gamblin Gamvar Gloss is what I like to use. I have a video of it on YouTube, kind of pour it on, spread it out, just don't hang it when you dry. If you hang it up when it dries, you'll get these long streaks of varnish that go down your painting. It's horrible. Horrible! He doesn't have TikTok, but he's your brother. All right, Amanda Atkinson. Let's see. Amanda, tell me where Tim lives then. Where am I going to ship this thing? Not, not his address, of course, but... What is the state that uh, that Tim lives where I'll be shipping this painting? And um, 
That way you can confirm that you in fact know him or you're sitting next to him or whatever. Or if he wants to write back to me on Etsy, I could, I could very easily do it. All right, that's it. So Amanda Atkinson, I'm going to give you the follow then. 14 followers. Now you got 15 if you accept my follow. I hope. I hope you accept. So what did he say uh, the name was? And for the person that said, how much are your paintings? They're all different priced. Go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. You can search all these different paintings um, everywhere from 89 bucks to 700 bucks. It's all over the place. So let's see. I want to go find uh, Winter Paradise. That's what it was. Okay. Let's do that, and then we'll end it, and we'll call it good. You guys have been a great crowd. I love you. What did we get to? 69,700 taps on the screen. That's amazing. Call it Winter Paradise. Damn, Tim is a repeat customer, and one of my best repeat customers, uh, recently anyway. He knows what he wants, and when he sees it, that's he gets it, right? You got to know that's the name of the game. Otherwise, somebody who's like Tim will also jump in and steal it before Tim. So if you want it, you got to get it early. And most of the time before we finish, right? That's the amazing thing is a lot of these paintings sell before we're even done with them. So a little pole dance. Hi, ladies. <laughs> uh, you don't want to see this off. It's not good. It's not good. Okay. Uh, I love you guys, though. Uh, let's see. Oh, initial the front. You're right. I would have forgotten. And then I would have had to come back, put it back on my easel and then go take a picture. Cause I always go to take the photos and, uh, I'll have this, I'll be looking at it. I'll take an awesome picture of it. And I look at it and go, Oh, I forgot to sign it. I gotta go put it back over here, sign it, then go back and try to take another awesome picture of it. Uh, it never works out right. Just never works out right. So let's see. Ooh, we got the black wood frame for this one too. So, I think, I think Tim might have got my last black wood frame, but I will get you a black wood frame, Tim, and we'll get it all framed up, shipped out to you. So, I wish I would have known, <laughs> I wish I would have known that you were going to buy this painting, Tim, because I literally bought a black 18 by 24 today, brand new frame that we bought. I bought two of these. I bought one for the black and white painting from yesterday and one for a future painting, but this one won't fit. It's too big. It's too big for your painting, but I'll run back to Michael's tomorrow and I'll grab you a 16 by 20 inch frame, throw it around your gorgeous winter paradise. And I agree, it's completely beautiful. I love it. Tim loves it. Amanda Atkinson loves it. Uh, can you do mountains soon? Where were you at like five this afternoon? Oh, it's downstairs. Oh, that painting's downstairs and I can't get to it right now. So we did one just like this, another Aurora, uh, pink and blue Auroras with a giant mountain and then a big crashing wave on a big 24 by 30 inch seascape. It turned out amazing, just amazing. You can go find me a photo of it over on my Facebook. And then if you sign up for my YouTube Super Squad, you get access to all these TikTok Lives. I download the TikTok Live, I upload it to my YouTube, but to the YouTube membership only place. The members only section is where all these TikTok Lives are. So if you wanna rewatch any of these TikTok Lives a million times over, it's $7.99 a month. You pay right through YouTube and um, YouTube basically unlocks the door and goes here, check out these 184 videos, all one hour to two hour long TikTok streams of exactly what we did, exactly how we painted the painting, just like we do right here. This is oil painting, Jesse Art World or Jess Art World. So uh, I don't, I mean, I, my shirt is all splatter paint. I know I don't have the, I don't have the space Therefore, I don't have the cojones to throw paint inside my house, right? If I had a big like studio, like a big building and I could, you know, get like a bunch of cleanup, I don't want to get paint all over the walls and God forbid all over the carpet and everywhere else. So I don't splatter paint. I do kind of flick like we did with our, our stars and kind of flick paint off of our palette, kind of splattering. But yes, the, uh, this is just to catch your eye, all these bright colors. And then the face holds you in, right? So. Uh, I love all you guys. I would love to own that piece. Well, you should have got it before it was purchased. Now it's been purchased by Tim. You can't have it. So uh, like I said, we go live almost every night. Tomorrow is Tuesday, which means we'll be live at 8 p.m. right here on TikTok, 8 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, which is basically one hour and 10 minutes ago from whatever time it is at your place. That's what time we start. So let's see. 
Uh, it said as a gift. Is there anything? Oh, is there anything that I need? Oh, guys, I always need stuff. I always need stuff. Um, we have in my Amazon wish list, right? My my girls will show you how to get to the wish list. Thank you, Hypnotic Beauty. Hey, there's Linz. Congratulations. Appreciate it, Linz. Whoop, where are we going? Hang on. I'm about to get, get, pull up the thing. There we go. So uh, if you go, what was I saying? I forget now. I forget what I was just saying. Josh Ross, that's true. Show on the tree. No, we don't need that because it's further away. It's much, it's part of the big forest back there. So it's much further away. Further in the distance means you don't need highlights on it. Makes it look further away if it's dark. Okay, yeah, my Amazon wish list. So if you want to send me uh, anything off of my wish list or uh, it's super easy, right? You can go to my bio and in my bio, there's a link tree link because we're over here on TikTok. So in my bio is a link tree, right? You click on the link tree and it opens up to this page where there's like 10 different links you can go to. If you search the one that says wish list, or not search, but if you scroll down a little bit, it'll say wish list, click wish list, uh, everything on there I need. So um, whatever's on the wish list, send it. I'm constantly updating it with uh, new brushes or new paints or new gesso, right? I go through this stuff like crazy because all the big canvases that we do, I have to make them black myself. They don't come black. This one came black from the store because it's nice and small, right? So for the bigger ones, I go through probably maybe two of these bottles a week. Like seriously, it's cool stuff right here, right? So right there. Thank you. I appreciate that. You said this is immaculate. Jay Lee. Uh, we've got that. I need, I always need two inch brushes, right? This one's brand new, but it's already starting to get kind of crazy, right? So we always need two inch brushes. We always need the one inch brush as well. Right. So those are both, I think this is about 17. That's about 15 bucks. Either which one, right? Not too expensive. Uh, we always need, you know what I actually need guys? I, I actually need a new, just in case these, cause I've broken one of these before, like literally snapped the metal in half cause I was pushing on it so hard, I guess. But a new set of palette knives. They're both about like, like 10 to 20 bucks each. You know what I mean? They're all over there in the wish list. Um, I mean, I always, oh, guys, 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 this is what I need, okay? It doesn't look right. Okay, here we go. This is what I need, right? This is the last tub of Bob Ross liquid clear that I have, which means we can't do any more black canvases unless I re-up on this, and I just opened it. Now, it comes in a little three-pack, right? When you look on Amazon, the Amazon choice is this little three-pack bottle, and these little bottles get me through every single painting, right? They literally get me this one for every black canvas. This one's for every white canvas. And we really don't use the liquid black. <laughs> really don't use it. Uh, I'm going to be using it more for like trees and stuff. But this little three pack is vital and it keeps our canvas wet, right? So this, the liquid clear, is what we used. See how the canvas is kind of shiny? It's kind of hard to see. Maybe you can see the reflection. Yeah, you can see how the reflection of me moving that tub across. And then right here, you can see the reflection of that thing and it's very mirror like very shiny wet that's because the canvas is covered in this paint it's covered in it all over the place and this paint allows all of our thick paints that we use like this right our i call them like our dairy queen paints they're like thick blizzard paint right that stuff never gonna come off ever like really shaking it doesn't even slide down the palette right it's so thick and so dry and and don't get me wrong it's not dry, right? It's wet paint, very wet, right? Very fresh out the tube wet, but it's very thick in comparison to that paint that we used. I was just showing you where you could literally pour it and it would drip out of the jar and all over the floor. Bad, bad day in your painting room when that happens, right? So you need all of those things. If you're gonna do a white canvas, you need the white. If you're gonna do a black canvas, you need the clear, right? So I go through the clear and the white like you wouldn't believe. And uh, if you really want to help me out, those are some of the things that I use most often. The two inch brush, the one inch brush, fan brush. Oh, the fan brushes, guys. I don't think I have got all these lights in my house. I'm like, what's that? There's big ring lights in my way. I can't see anything. Maybe I have one more set of fan brushes up there. So the Gak Doctor fan brushes, they're a, a, a red fan brush handle. They say G-A-C-D-R, GAC Doctor. It's the best way I know how to put it. 
Best way I know how to say it, GAC Doctor, right? And uh, they're awesome. They're like $9, I uh, think they're $9.99 for seven brushes. All uh, hog hair, I think I have, oh, good. I got, a, got one that's not even used yet, right? It's got some splatter on the handle, but these things are fantastic. That's how you say it. That's what it looks like, GAC Doctor, right? They're hog hair bristle brushes. And uh, I go through these like you wouldn't believe. So if you want to send them to, uh, through my Amazon wish list, that would be fantastic. What do I do with the leftover paint? It sits right here until tomorrow when we paint again. So I'm painting so often that, uh, that, um, that uh, I don't have to really save it, that um, it uh, just waits for me to come back and paint on again. So thank you. I love you, Nikita. Appreciate you guys. And uh, I got to get out of here. Uh, how does pine, how does a pine address work? What? How does a pine? I'm, just, I'm confused by that question. How does a pine address out? I don't understand the question, but all right. Good night guys. I love you. Uh, I'm super happy this one sold and, um, Tim, you're going to love it. I wait for it to dry. Maybe two, three days. We'll get it in the box for you and get it sent out. So until I see you guys again next time, and we got to get a frame for it. I almost forgot about that. So until I see you guys again next time, good night, Linz. Good night, Gabby. Good night. Good night, everybody. Because <laughs> we got a freaking sweet deal that we still can't talk about yet. But it's the only thing that's on my mind. So I love you guys. I can't wait. And uh, as soon as I'm able to tell you about it, I will. So until I see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day. Apple.